So 343 just revealed the new operation coming in next week on April 30th. It's called the Banished Honor operation. And this content update does bring a lot of great things to the game, but also has some questionable aspects of it as well. Amazing things like new forge palettes for us to play around with, and also a sandbox update which brings back the classic feature of the EMP with the pistol, and also an exchange which gives you an option to be able to grind out in-game points to get unlocks by just playing the game. Crazy concept, I know, but it also comes with its own issues as well though. So if you guys like these informational videos, make sure to tap like and subscribe if you want to stay up date with everything going on with news and gaming in general, but let's get right into those details. So first let's talk about the exchange. This is going to be a hot topic moving forward. If you guys don't know what the exchange is, think of it like the MTC if you guys have played that, where basically you earn points by playing the game and you can spend those points on unlocks for your character. Sounds awesome, right? And actually a lot of the stuff within this exchange and some pretty good stuff like actual content I would want to grind for like these different coatings. This is going to be all part of different types of things you can unlock and these things you can unlock are going to be things that were either tied to specific events that you can't unlock anymore, different types of cosmetic promotions that we have had throughout the years as well when it comes to Halo, and also new things like this Xanadu Falu coating which is worth 30,000 Spartan points which I'll get we'll break down the math of what it actually takes to unlock that which might be a little concerning for a lot of people out there but this is overall i would say a w update when it comes to giving players an ability to grind for unlocks and get people the opportunity just to play the game and be rewarded for doing that which is something that's been a big issue within halo infinite but the thing is that i feel like this operation is going to be tied to this exchange and it's going to be a lot of issues going along with it moving forward because the pricing on a lot of these things right here when it comes to the exchange are rather high and let me show you what i'm talking about let's bust out the ms paint to show you guys what we're talking about so per day you complete a match you do earn 250 credits for just playing a game per day so if you times that by seven that will equal 1750 credits now these operations generally last about a month six weeks something like that four to six weeks which they did say with the exchange that they are planning to do a refresh of the exchange every four to six weeks whenever we do get a new operation the weekly ultimate rewards are now going to be changing to earning these spartan points you'll earn 1000 spartan points for completing the weekly ultimate so that's 1000 credits you can earn per week now a fantastic change that's coming with the operation passes it's still gonna be your typical 20 tiers and same amount of customization you can earn but they took out all the filler like name plates and emblems and things like that and replaced them all with spartan credits which you can earn these spartan points and they are coming various levels some that were like 250 credits 500 credits 2000 credits things like that the math was worked out that you earn 15,000 credits for the pass and if these operations last roughly four weeks right let's give it one month how many cr credits could you earn for an entire month max payout so that's 1750 for your daily challenges times that by four that equals 7,000 total credits you can earn from just completing every single daily challenge for that month your weekly ultimate you get 1000 so then if you times that by four that will then equal obviously 4000 credits and most likely you can complete the event operation pass within a month giving you 15,000 total credits meaning the grand total of total credits you can earn within a month is 26,000 credits well let's put that in context with the exchange so that brand new coding that's coming into the game for this exchange is the one bit of new content within the exchange is worth 30,000 credits. So if you played every single day and completed every single weekly challenge and got through the entire event pass within a month, you would not be able to earn this coding for your character. And not to mention there are a bunch of other things within the exchange that would be something I would want to unlock myself. Like this helmet attachment that's referencing cat getting well shot in the head, that's worth 6,000 credits. This wrist attachment here, it's 1,500 credits. So it's literally impossible to earn that new coding if you played every single day and completed every single challenge every week. I find that a bit steep, don't you think? It just feels kind of rough to get that news when you actually think about the total points needed. So you'd be only really would be able to unlock like one or two main codings that you would want maybe some armor pieces here and there but out of the entirety that's part of the exchange you won't really be able to unlock much of it at all now keep in mind that the exchange is a lot of reused content that we haven't been able to unlock for a long time so that's tied to events 
cosmetics that were tied to promotions and things like that. So we could see a lot of repeat content coming in with the exchange, but with this initial offering that we see, you'll be able to unlock probably like one, two, maybe three things within a month if you played every single day and completed every single challenge. I feel like this exchange is a massive W for Halo, but it seems like it's just tied behind this little trickle of content that Halo players always get when it comes to just playing the game, which has been the biggest issue of just getting people to continuously play Halo. Um, maybe me just kind of being a little bit ranty and a little bit upset about it, but uh, how do you guys feel about it? Let me know in the comments about this. When it comes to other content that's involved with this update coming on April 30th, we do have this new Forge Palette. We have an alien planet vibe when it comes to things you can do with Forge. We also have a lot of various fixes that come with like scripting and things like that. Again, I'm not gonna get too thick in the weeds here, but basically just think of Forgers having more options to create awesome things, which obviously Halo has been relying a lot on Forge when it comes to its content. So be able to pump that into Forge, let the community create some stuff that they can utilize when it comes to maybe possibly matchmaking, which we'll get into a little bit later in this video, which has some great things that added in when it comes to Forge and matchmaking. But we also had this alien planet and another one I'm sure you're really excited about. That being the Flood palette, has, which was announced previously, is now coming into the game. Very excited about this. It's going to be amazing for your infection maps. I'm sure we're going to see a lot of this being utilized within the game. Especially since we've seen a lot of criticisms about these Forge maps that are coming into the game being a little monochromatic, a little drab, not that exciting to look at. Hopefully with these new additions being brought into the game, we can liven up that Forge palette a little bit, get, create some more visual map variety within Halo Infinite. And this is going to be an amazing addition for Forgers. I'm really excited for you guys out there. Can't wait for to see what the content you guys create. Now with this update coming out on April 30th, we have some sandbox changes. They are minor changes and they weren't really detailed too much within the stream, but they did state a few things that are changing. One is the gravity hammer is getting a little bit of a nerf on its range to put it better in place. Uh, the sniper rifle is getting a quality of life improvement where the ready up time from picking up the weapon to be able to shoot is going to be reduced a little bit in time so you would be able to shoot faster from picking up the weapon, which is which, which is going to be really nice. Uh, one change though that I'm a little not too hyped on is the cinder shot is getting nerfed where they were removing the gravity pull effect with the cinder shot and also slower fire rate is being and the fire rate is being reduced slightly with it. I'm not too keen on this update. I think it's more just like people being annoyed with the cinder shot in Husky Raid mainly and then making these changes because personally I think having that gravity effect helps make the weapon much more useful as a power weapon and reducing the fire rate. I'm okay with that. Apparently it's very slightly like to the point where you might not even notice it really but it's important to keep in mind that that's what's happening with the center shot there the spike grenade is getting a significant change where it will detonate on landing like all the other grenades within the game and not detonate in the air on a timer just so it just has a little bit more consistency right there and the decrease the timer of that detonation so it should explode a little bit faster once landing on top of a surface so great to see that Next, we got a very prominent weapon that you definitely want to know more about when it comes to nerfs is the sidekick and saying that the rate of fire is being very slightly reduced so you can be a little less spamming with it. And also they say it should still kind of fit the same role within the sandbox, right? It's not turned into the CE pistol or anything like that. So you kind of probably won't even notice the change, but it's being reduced slightly. But the biggest change here, I know a lot of people within the community are hyped about this. Personally, I'm not is this change coming with the uh, plasma pistol here. As you can see right here, they brought back the EMP effect with the plasma pistol, which I know a lot of people in the community have been asking for it. Personally, for myself, I think we have enough weapons and items within the sandbox that can counter vehicles like the disruptor, the shock rifle, and the shock nades as well, which you can find quite often within the map. I think this might be just something that people just kind of want from just like, hey, this is what the legacy effects of the plasma pistol used to be, and I'm expecting this weapon to act that way, rather than something that's think is needed within the sandbox. But now there's another way to counter vehicles within Halo Infinite, which I would say that Halo Infinite vehicles definitely struggle with their effectiveness within the, uh, the games, just because there's so many ways to counter them and they don't have a whole lot of health on them. But I mean, this is what people wanted. This is what you're gonna get. There's some significant changes coming to the modes of Halo Infinite as well. One being the King of the Hill scoring is changing where now assist will count towards your score. That is putting damage into AI characters. You'll get an assist point 
point right there. I believe it's five points for that. And you will be getting driving assists as well. So you can help make progression, earn that XP for performing well in game. Driving assist is crucial as myself who loves to drive and support players. I was getting no progression when it comes to playing in King of the Hill as a driver, which you know that having that Warhog app is incredibly crucial to make sure you have high success, especially in the higher difficulties. And so you want that Warhog in your hands, right? But if you're driving it, you're not making any points for experience to make progression. So that's great to see. Uh, next, they have an option when it comes to extraction. You'll be able to have multi-site extraction options within custom games. So we'll see what forgers and custom games people can come up with that, which is really cool. An absolutely fantastic change is coming to rank that should have been there at launch, but I'm glad it's finally in the game now. And that is the option for the game to just end if people don't load into the game properly. This is what you'll see in the match starting saying teams are uneven, match ending soon. This is what's going to happen where if you load into a game and say someone crashes or lags out or something like that, the game won't continue to play in a 3v4 situation in rank. They'll view that as an unfair match and then just quit the match out. Your CSR will not be affected at all with this update, which is crucial, right? And so I really love this change. This should have been there at launch, man, but I'm glad to see that's finally coming into the game as well. Uh, next, we're also seeing a uh, match score override, which basically is a feature which is going to be very beneficial for the HCS side of things. Say your game crashes, right? You have to get five kills or 10 kills or whatever to win the game rather than your typical 50. You can just boost the score up to that point now, meaning that you can still end the games at the right time. Or if you want to play 1v1s and get someone a little bit of a head start, if you want to give them like 10 kills in advance or something like that, that's a custom game option. I think it's going to be a really fun addition right there. Again, could be some really cool things you could do with Forge and custom games there on top of that. And lastly, when it comes to modes and extra little diddly doos that are getting some updates, the kill cam rotation is being sped up a little bit, as well as you'll be able to rotate the camera as much as you'd like after putting input after it follows the character for a, a little bit of a moment there. And then now we have some also we have some great changes when it comes to weapon drills within Halo Infinite. Uh, one thing is that we know that once the Bandit Evil was introduced into Halo Infinite, you couldn't run any practice modes with it. But now you will be able to do that with weapon drills within Halo Infinite. As showcased right here, just like your typical, just like any other the weapon but you'd be able to use the bandit evo again crucial when it comes to the ranked experience this is one time you do kind of want to warm up a little bit before playing so glad to see that change coming into the game typically i just kind of like to jump into just regular or simulated matches with bots and just kind of practice shooting those but this could be useful for anyone who just wants to use it big thing here they also touched on networking since the new networking model has been updated in the halo infinite there have been well some controversies when it comes to the whole thing and 343 did go into this talking about how there will be no like silver bullet one change that's going to fix everything this is going to be a process over time to gather data and see what they can change one thing that they are changing with the april 30th update is the skewer where basically it's been having some issues when it comes to landing your shot up properly and not actually hitting because of maybe higher latencies and things like that they said they have improved the skewer shot on higher latencies so it should be more representative representative of what the experience should be when you're shooting that skewer now uh, they also changed uh reverted i should say a fix that came with this saying that weapon drops will be the same time as swapping weapons we had this issue previously within halo they fixed that now as well and also stated a very rare occasion of a vehicle being put into a false doom state when it actually wasn't so glad to see that change came in next we had some major changes when it comes to the playlist as we do know now we have a new map called corrosion that's been added into the game it has its own 24 7 playlist as well so you can jump in and play that we have interference has jumped in for the ranked experience and you'll be able to jump in and play that as well we also with this april 30th update we'll have a btb heavies refresh coming around as well i know people love their btb heavies and so you get a chance to enjoy some new maps with that one as well interesting thing that 343 mentioned with this next coming may update that'll be coming with a combat workshop that combat workshop mode being survival of the undead. This has been an extremely popular mode within the custom game browser. They have their own maps, as you can see. Basically what they did is they tried to replicate Call of Duty zombies, but in Halo Infinite, and they've done a very successful job of doing that. So the combat workshop will have basically Call of Duty zombies in Halo that you'll be able to play in May as a combat workshop, which is incredibly important to know that this actually means that a lot of the leaks that we saw about these custom game modes that have been very popular within the Halo franchise, been very popular within the Halo Infinite community 
are now going to be potentially play tested to be put into matchmaking. And one other mode that I saw that was mentioned when it comes to these leaks of maps and modes that people are testing out is the Battle Royale that Forge Falcons have also made. But of course, we'll have to wait and see until we actually get that information. And that's everything we know going on with the Banish Honored update coming out on April 30th, guys. If you guys want to know more and stay tuned to with all the other blogs that will be coming out later this week as well, make sure you stay subscribed to the channel and catch you on the next one. Peace out.